what do you think the attraction is of those types of story, of those types of shows versus say like a CSI or something like that, where where it, it doesn't really take you with you? With well, I think I think a CSI or Law and Order. I mean, you've got great actors um, playing great characters. Sam Waterston on Law and Order is one of my personal and professional heroes, um, but. Uh, He's not necessarily the star. I think the, the, the case that they're trying is the star. And that's why each episode can kind of exist unto uh, itself. And you don't need to see them in any particular order. You can watch you know, an episode from season one, an episode from season five, back to back, and it, it won't, can, you know, they don't cancel each other out. Whereas Prison Break, um, if you miss a couple episodes, you're lost. You really need to start from the beginning. And I think the rewards of being along on that journey, tuning in every single week, investing in the story, investing in the characters, um, are that much richer and more satisfying because you've been with them since the very beginning. Uh, how has being on the show changed your perception of the American criminal justice system? Mm. Well, um, I think, I, think I, I do appreciate in a way I didn't before that the line between us and them is, uh, is, is much thinner and less distinct than we'd like to believe. Because uh, I remember driving home from season one in Chicago on my way back to Los Angeles, seeing road signs on a certain stretch of highway that said, you know, under construction, uh, if you hit a highway worker, it's um, like a $14,000 fine and 10 years in prison. So if you sneeze at the wrong time, um, the worst case uh, scenario um, might occur and you could find yourself behind bars, you know, um, sharing a cell with uh, a tea bag or an abruzzi. Um, there are a thousand shades of gray behind bars, a thousand shades of guilt um, and innocence. Um, and uh, to, to dismiss everyone behind bars as being um, you know, uh, deserving of whatever punishment has been meted out, um, I think is, is far too quick, far too easy, far too facile a judgment to make. You can't. Interesting. Um, what's your take on the relative merits of acting on TV versus, versus movies? Uh, uh, and are you still keen to carve out a career in movies? Um, well, I'd like to play in both playgrounds, I think. Um, you couldn't uh, you couldn't do justice to a show like Prison Break in a feature film. You, just, you couldn't squeeze all that into two hours. I couldn't do justice to my character in a two-hour movie. There's something about knowing that we're going to be playing uh, in this particular universe long term that allows for subtle gradations of character and development that you'd have to shorthand in a feature film. But at the same time. Um, you know, you can curse in movies, and you can do a thousand one things that we can't do as a network show on uh, at eight o'clock every Monday night. Um, there's, a, there's, a, I think, a different kind of freedom to be had in the world of feature film. Not a greater freedom, just a different kind. And uh, it's something I'd like to sample more thoroughly. Are you shooting anything during your hiatus? Uh, well, we've still got another eight episodes of the show to go second season, so that's where my focus is. But um, what I'm looking for specifically is a smaller project where it's all about relationships. There's no guns or stunts or government conspiracies. And what would be great um, is if I got the chance to do maybe two or three scenes with a Glenn Close or a Denzel Washington or a Ben Kingsley. Um, just something where I could come in and kind of apprentice uh, myself to, uh, to a veteran. Um, no doubt your newfound stardom has led to many changes in your life. Can you describe some of those changes, both positive and negative, mm -hmm. uh, and the adjustments you've had to make in becoming a star? Uh, you know, it always surprises people when I tell them that the only real definitive change in my life, um, uh, as far as uh, who I am now or where I am now and where I was before, is I get a lot of people asking me, you know, What's it like now? <laughs> What's it like to be a sex symbol? Or however they want to spin the question. Um, I've worked very hard to change as little as possible. Um, I worked for a long time to, to achieve some kind of success for myself. Uh, I made certain sacrifices along the way. And I think I'm at a certain age where um, just because uh, I can now go to the right clubs and hang out with the right people. Um, it's not as tempting as it may have been when I was um, 10 years younger. Um, 
I do run into fans all the time. TV is a very powerful medium. Um, it doesn't feel like I'm no longer anonymous. It just feels like I'm running into extended family uh, wherever I go. Um, and they know you and they don't know you. I was at the mall uh, the other week and this kid, who must have been 14 or 15, comes up to me hyperventilating. He's so excited to see me. And uh, he's a big fan of the show and a big fan of me. And he's got posters and knickknacks and um, I don't know where he's getting all this stuff. Um, but uh, he calls his mom on the cell phone because his mom's at the other end of the mall. But she has the camera, so we have to wait there while she, you know, makes her way down from Foot Locker or whatever to, you know, to take this picture. Um, so he calls her, and he's breathing hard. He's like, oh, my God, Mom, it's the guy from Prison Break. It's Worthington. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so close. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was it was sweet and it's endearing and I think it's indicative of this strange relationship between actors on TV and 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 people who watch their shows because you know if you're Jennifer Aniston or David Schwimmer people have been watching you uh, you know at Central Perk um, every Thursday night at eight o'clock for years so they know your face they're invested in you um, in a way that they are probably not invested in members of their own family. But at the same time, they really have no idea who uh, these people are um, behind closed doors. Wait, was, was there a defining moment where you realized you, you, you'd made it, like, you know, driving down Sunset and seeing a billboard for Christmas break <laughs> or something? Was there? Um, there uh, have been a thousand small moments, but the one, one, of the, one of those moments that really hit home was uh, when I drove out to Chicago from LA to start the first season. I was pulled over for speeding in Utah. I was going five miles over the speed limit um, and I got a ticket. And then I was pulled over for speeding um, coming back from first season when the show had been on the air for X number of months, this time in Idaho. And uh, unbelievable as it may sound, I was also only going five miles over the speed limit. Um, and uh, I was pulled over, and the guy's taking my license and registration, and he's asking me where I'm coming from, what's my hurry, why is you know all this luggage in the back seat, and he honestly had to drag the information out of me. But eventually, I admitted that I was you know on a show called Prison Break, and I was going home after shooting the first season. It turns out his wife's a big fan, and uh, guess who got off with a warning? I swear I didn't play that card, <laughs> but it was it was or seemed to be a mark of of, of how far uh, I'd come in terms of kind of uh, a larger recognition than I was used to. Either that or they're just more forgiving in Idaho. Than <laughs>